Uh, so I'm using Menti for this, which I regret for a number of reasons. Um, but if you go to menti.com and follow the little numbers, you'll be able to interact. Um, yeah, too much interaction, fine. Um, so I'm going to level you. This kind of came from me thinking a little bit about Agile is kind of what we see as the best way to do software development, or at least like we we'll use some practices. Probably no one's really feels like they're doing all Agile. Um, I think I've tried to cover too much and too broad, but if you vote really quickly, we can get through a lot. I don't think it's going to happen. So apologies, but hopefully at the very least, you'll have a little bit of a, an idea into what evidence there is out there and some links to sort of look at things further on. So hopefully there's some people on Menti. Um, quick warm up. I, of course, I'm in like, I get the same view that you get. This is going to be great. Uh, so please fill this out. My general thing that I'm going to do is to try to give a bit of context, but essentially the slides voting should all just be there. I guess I have to submit this as well. So like, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, I do good. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was too quick, wasn't I? Uh, it is here. Three, three. Ah, oh, that hasn't moved. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, it is on the presentation, like uh, in the conference notes. There's a link from there. Uh, but it is, if you're really quick at writing, 3327-4743. Ah, oh, I can go back to that slide. Now you can see it. This is great. Adding to my regrets. Jason's going to ask you to fill in these as quickly as you can. I'm going to give some context to like the research behind it whilst that's happening, because otherwise it's going to be hilarious. Now it's going to be even more hilarious. Um, and I guess maybe when I show the results, this will disappear for me on the presenter view. No, it won't. Okay. So I'm just going to submit these as well with you. That's going to be great. Uh, and yeah, sure. Fine. Definitely not regretting this at all. Um, Cause there's also a lag between when I say show it and when it shows up on there. Oh, yes. Uh, close voting? Maybe if I close voting, that does it. It doesn't. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, well, this is going well. When people have it on their own devices, they see the, like, the results yet? Brilliant. Um, so I have logged into the presentation, and it is sharing from that, but I need to log into my UCL account to get it onto here, which I guess I now am going to do. This is good. Um, okay, while we're doing that, uh, what ways do you think you could evaluate something as like nebulous as like pair programming um, or like agile as a whole? Um, it's really difficult and you've got a whole range of different options there that you could have. Um, I think for my money, the best quality you can really realistically get is sort of Experimental results where you might have something from like a day to like five weeks of a uh, test to try to go through. So you might have someone on pair programming, here's a task, you've got six weeks to do it, and you can measure different things about it. Um, then as you go down, you've got, uh, sorry, just typing in. Then you've got things like case studies, which can just like compare different things. Can't find my account, right? Um, it's really just not moved. That's bizarre. And the worst thing is, so now I have to go find my password. This is going great. Love it. Um, so it's very difficult, I guess. Let's actually just maybe do the presentation without any slides. Is that a sane thing to do? Yeah, fuck it. Let's just go. Um, didn't swear. That's fine. Um, so it's really difficult, um, and I think all of the quality, ev all the evidence that we have is fairly low. Oh, now it's moved. All right, fine, great. Um, just the voting won't work. This is going to be perfect, the entire point of the talk. So I'm going to check a couple of agile practices, try to get a feel. Please vote. It'll be fun. We can share the PDF afterwards so we actually know what you thought versus the reality. And the whole idea is 
hopefully you'll have a bit of a sense for what you thought was the case, and then maybe you'll be surprised. Um, so pair programming actually has like quite a bit of data about it, sort of meta-analysis of 30 papers of decent quality. Um, and essentially, it's a really vast area. It's really interesting. I think if you want to dig into literature on pair programming, it's great fun. Um, it can be sort of a lot faster when the complexity is low. When it's a really difficult thing, it really does better with quality. Um, fascinating. Uh, I'm going to assume that just no one's going to be able to see that. But maybe I'll see share show results. Doesn't change it. Fine. Uh, there is a bit of a distribution where people think it really improves the quality, really improves the learning. A little bit on the other two. Um, it's kind of the opposite. Uh, small increase in quality, small increase in learning, um, mediumish increase in time it like time it takes, wall time. But if you take two people working on it, you double it, and actually makes them medium slower. Uh, so uh, can't see it yet. That's great. Uh, the next slide is a forest plot, I promise you, uh, which gives you an idea of how you compare multiple analyses that might not have exactly the same data in there. And for pair programming, I love this. There's like 12-ish studies. Um, I'm really enjoying just describing. Surely this will uh, tell me that I'm not on the right slide. Is that what that is? Good slide. Yay! Oh, great. Um, there is a slight, so the square boxes are essentially like the number of participants, and then the center of it is, let's call it the mean, it's not quite the mean value, and there's confidence intervals. And you see right at the bottom, the two diamonds are models for how you could assess overall what literature says. And yeah, there's a slight favoring pair programming, but it's like super small. Major caveat with all of this is that like, the studies range from like one day to like six weeks. Trying to work this in a professional context is really super difficult to do. Um, and when we look then at learning, kind of similar, bit more variation. Um, and also like a slight increase, you know, the conversations aren't hitting zero, so it is significant. It is small. Um, equally, the studies themselves are really artificial but really easy to assess, which is critical. Uh, and then when we look at total programming hours, you can see there's a bit more of a shift, even though these pictures aren't as big as I want them to be. Uh, it is what's like a medium effect. So it does slow you down in general. Equally, you could argue you're working for like months with the same people. You actually build up much more of a flow. So definite caveat there. Um, Great, test room development. Love testing development, right? What do we think you can see from the literature? Kind of similar, like kind of like a few hours to maybe like four or five weeks uh, within literature. Similar sort of body evidence um, overall is in like the most recent uh, systematic analysis. There was a decent amount of evidence uh, for it, kind of 30-ish papers. And I'm just gonna like, pick out a couple bits. Okay, cool. So like people thought generally it does increase quality and preference of programmers, which yeah, looks like it does. Basically, the only other thing you can really say is like it seems to improve productivity in students. Um, overall, if you take like the quality as a whole, it kind of looks like a whole lot of nothing. Uh, so I'll, oh, I can show the correct answer on your things. Hmm, fine. And I will go to slide. Great. Learning now. So now you look at the forest plot here, squarely on zero. Absolute nothing. This is terrible. Until you then break it out and look at uh, studies which are done in academia and studies which are much more industry related. And it seems like maybe some of the pair programming, like the complexity of the problem, makes it a lot more useful. Not overall surprising, but it is interesting that from what we can see, like teaching students pair programming, they're gonna hate it, they're gonna get confused and it's not gonna help them. It's a good thing for them to do, but like, unless they're working 
in industry, as far as we can tell. It probably won't help them immediately. Uh, great. Now I'm going to do, hopefully, how am I doing for time? Hilariously? Actually, we're all right. Yeah, this is okay. Um, agile versus big design. Brilliant. Absolutely hilarious because all the quality is like, it's so low. And it's just because it's really difficult. Like, how do you compare an entire framework of working? How do you know someone's doing like real agile or pure design up front? Um, so have a little vote here on what you think uh, this like fairly recent survey, which was uh, 1,400 uh, individuals from all across the world basically asked, how agile do you think you are? Like rate it on a scale and a whole load of other information about how their most recent projects have gone um, and what do you think that found? And I should say like this is probably the biggest study. It's really uh, like for trying to look at this comparatively. Um, and it's pretty similar to the small studies that preceded it. And I will show the results. Yeah, great. Really sorry for remote people. Hopefully it's showing you on your devices, is it? Why is it not showing it there? Fine. Uh, yeah, okay, fun. So what's really great doesn't actually help you meet your goals in any way, shape or form from this thing. Equally, surveys, huge bias. Like who's gonna say that the last three projects they did were all terrible and never hit anything. So fine. Um, didn't actually change upfront planning at all. Like nothing. The more agile you were, you still did the exact same amount of upfront planning, which probably means I do more upfront planning. Uh, and then stakeholders, there was kind of a, oh, I should have said actually the, the goals, there was a trend towards it, but like it wasn't significant. You could really squint and try, but I'm not gonna, no. Uh, stakeholders, didn't like also a little bit of a trend, but they weren't more satisfied. The project team loved it though. People like doing agile. Development team, hands down. Um, and that's like a good reason to do it. Uh, and unsurprisingly, you did more planning after your initial scoping, which hopefully you do some planning sometimes, but it is interesting when you take like the pro proportion of the project, like it sounds like you do more planning with agile because you got the same upfront planning, and then more iterative planning. Fine. Uh, now we're dropping back to the land of extreme programming because basically when Agile was coming of age, this is when majority of the studies, uh, especially like comparative studies within uh, teams actually were done. Um, and you know, of like 2000 studies that were reviewed and like 30 had enough rigor to make it into the systematic review. And of those like 11 studies were direct comparisons. And I wanna say two maybe were on like mature development teams. So huge caveat once again for what we're actually working with. Like it's very hard to show anything, but hopefully you guys have voted and yeah, okay, nice. Uh, XP, but I'm gonna say agile, makes team members, team members less interchangeable because you don't have as much like upfront scoping risk management. So you have to rely on individual people's skills. You can't say, oh, like, cool, I've scoped out the entire module of this. Do what I said to do because I'm the architect and I've thought about this hopefully well. Um, you actually rely on individual team members a lot more, which I thought was fun. And there's a classic idea, and like this is, I would say, dogma, that agile, you've got like small organizing teams, they're working on their code, they're doing everything. It's gonna increase like cohesion, they're gonna feel ownership of the code. No evidence, no, no change, brilliant. Um, but once again, developers love it. Honestly, like 95% of developers who work in agile, like. I would use Agile, Agile for life. Which, yeah, fine. It's not a bad reason. Um, and sometimes there's an increase in like lines of code per hour. Is that a good thing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, 
Oh, I can change the slide. Great. Just a little bit of a, a feel here for some of the other caveats besides the limitations of how you can actually study this um, in a real setting. Um, have a little vote on like your last project. Hopefully those are relatively sane in terms of like factor my allocation. I'm talking about like, I'm working on three projects. I gave them all equal amount of time. So I put that roughly a third up the scale. If you worked on one project, slide it all the way to the end. Um, because I think there's a lot of caveats here where, okay. Oh, I should get a few more votes. It's fairly sporadic. Um, there are some quite chunky development teams. And I'm going to assume that's probably peaking at about two, with the mean being currently at five ish, which actually is better than I thought. Um, general, like in almost all the studies, if you had to like group agile teams, a small team is like four people or less. And like, that's right at the tail end of the distribution. Um, so whatever we're saying here, it's very difficult to apply if you're usually working with like two people, one person. Very, very tricky to do agile with one person. Um, and we're looking at kind of a 70%-ish allocation um, to a project, probably a peak, I guess, at like half. Yeah, I know. Uh, so if the number is 11, so actually it's probably more like, oh, it's just like, so the first one I wanted raw numbers, the rest is just like slide up to where your heart feels, you know? So like if you're 50%, you'd slide it to 10. Yeah, I know. One of my regrets with choosing Mentimeter, it's fine. Uh, ooh, actually, maybe if I skip, do I, if I skip, do you think it'll show me? It won't, will it? Nah. The only one. Brilliant. Um, hopefully you've got it on your uh, devices, it will. Um, and great. So that was hilarious. I really enjoyed all of that. Oh, I've got two minutes. Well, actually, this didn't go that badly. Maybe it was terrible for you. Um, sorry. I feel like it was. Uh, so there's not that much high quality evidence. All of the systematic reviews basically say there's a huge amount of bias in all the data. A lot of studies don't even like try to account for any bias. It's like, I sent out a questionnaire. Where did you send it to? To agile like conferences. Where could be the bias in that if you're trying to evaluate agile versus non-agile? That seems fine. Um, pair programming and like all this caveat of like small scale does slightly improve quality and learning and test driven development probably does increase code quality professionally. That seems like a really reasonable uh, takeaway. And Agile isn't worse than big design and you're probably not doing big design up front. So you should probably do it because you'll enjoy it as a developer. Uh, there was some extra, but I'm just going to leave it there because that's enough. It's fine. Yes, so we'll start with the first question. Um, do you think an RSE can adequately focus on best software development practices in short-term 10-day projects <laughs> where half the time is spent on requirements and collaboration, leaving the rest of direct development and learning? Spicy take. We shouldn't be doing 10-day projects. What can you do in 10 days? Honest answer or like more thought out answer. I think you can still at least instill some best practices. Trying to do it in like pair programming might actually be better in 10 days because at least you don't have to do code review. Um, yeah. But yeah, as a 10 day project is too short to do much of substance. Did Dev say what they enjoy more about HR? Yeah, I think they found big design up front and being like told what to do a lot more restrictive. And so they enjoyed the process of being able to like make their own decisions and presumably like make their own errors. They felt like they learned more from it rather than just be like, here's a architecture of like this factory doing this. 
please do it. And being like, yeah, cool, fine. I'm just like constructing, but they didn't get involved as like much of the rest of the stages. So they felt like more, more part of the team. If Agile doesn't improve anything, why do you think people love it? Because it's not documentation. Because it's you feel like you get you get to code quicker, probably. Like the honest answer, like devs like to code. It gets you like it takes, you know, let's say in like a two-year project, you have a lot less time to start coding. Like you might start coding on like day two, day one, rather than like three, four months down the line. Um, you said this month of upfront planning is the same. True. No, no, you're right. Um, hmm, good point. I mean, it could be cargo cults. I think it, I think it probably does make sense just because you can have iterative development. So you might, you like, you'll never do everything that you say you will do right at the start, but at least the customer will get something useful. It's like, they're still delivering value, right? Um, and it just depends whether, like both of them will run over time to get everything they want, fine. Both of them will probably still have negotiations on what, that you now can't do because you're two thirds way through the project and actually you're far too ambitious. So I think it's probably just much more, you have the constant engagement aspects where you don't have to like deliver bad news suddenly, but like you slowly, like everyone's okay with the slow change of like, actually this is going to be less world changing than we hoped and it's still going to be useful to us. <laughs>